I don't want to scare anyone. But I'm going to give it to you straight about Jason. <laughs> Welcome, lovely people of the 716 and other lands. Sabres fans everywhere from Sabre Nation. And welcome to the Warpath Crossover Podcast. My name is Jason Malloy. At J Don't Fade, you can call me by. Uh, that's my Twitter name at least, right? And we're going to talk Sabres hockey, okay? And today, what we're going to get into, it's going to be real short, real sweet. Just want to get you guys ready for the podcast. Uh, this is the first episode, so to say, a commercial, more than an episode. Uh, a lengthy commercial at that. A lot of ad time paid for here. Not really, but we're going to talk draft just slightly. And then I really, what I really want to get into, to be honest with you, is I really want to get into just the line combinations. I want to give you guys an overall view of what we're looking at in Sabres hockey today and for the upcoming season, right? But we've got so much going on, right? Like, so all you Bills fans out there, this is the time we're at the Super Bowl, right? The Colorado Avalanche just won their first Stanley Cup in quite a while. Sabres still don't have one yet. We're going to hope to turn that around here the next couple of years. Uh, with the current management that we've got and the coaching staff that we've got that we all like, uh, Donnie Meatballs, of course. We're going to go over the line combinations, what we've got here, maybe the defensive pairings a little bit, and obviously the goaltender situation is what it is. We're still looking for an answer there. Might have it within the organization. I don't know that we do. We'll see. But we get the draft coming up on Thursday, right? And because we're going to have draft coverage live on Thursday, this year we have three picks on Thursday. We've got an early, we've got a pick in every, every, it's like almost every 10 picks if you think about it. We've got a top 10 pick, we've got a top 20 pick, and we've got a top 30 pick. Uh, a lot of trades were made. Uh, Jack Eichel, Samson, Sam Reinhardt. Uh, really, that one hurt the most because I liked Sam a lot. But we didn't like Jack, of course, when he was likable. But not that he's not now. We're not going to start on that. He's over and done with. He's in Vegas. Best of luck to him. I think we got the better end of the trade thus far, and I think in the future we'll see that as well. But either way, I want to give them the Sabres line combinations, the defensive pairings uh, a little bit, just to give you a preview of what the Sabres look like so you can mull that over while the draft is coming up. And then on draft day, we're going to talk all prospects, all top 10 prospects. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to mention the top 10 prospects in the draft right now. Sabres are going to get one of them by way of number because they have a top 10 pick. They have the seventh overall pick, I believe. And we'll go ahead and take a look at those top 10 prospects. I'm just going to list them off, their position, where they're from, and what they're ranked on the scale uh, for this is from an article from NBC Sports, by the way, uh, what they're ranked in the scale. The first one coming up uh, on the prospect list, this is really no shocker. He was mentioned throughout the season by a multitude of teams, uh, Montreal mostly from what I noticed. And leading and heading that list is centerman Shane Wright from the Kingston Frontenacs. Of the OHL, his rank, one, right? His average rank is one. Uh, he's a very good player. Um comparisons to McDavid he was and I, I forget this and I really should know this being a big hockey fan but it's like uh what is it called impeccable or excellent player I believe it's excellent player status in Canada where you're of a certain age if you're you know 15 or 16 you can play with the grown-ups essentially or the older kids um men really at that point older kids older men um just because you're that good right and Shane Wright I believe you know Shane Wright Connor McDavid and maybe I could be so wrong I'm almost certain I am. John Tavares uh, and maybe even Matt Barzell uh, also got that exemption and they were allowed to play as well because they're just fantastic players. And if he's anything like them, he's going to be a fantastic player. So Shane Wright, centerman, Kingston Frontenox. Next player, Brad Lambert. He's a centerman, also a right winger. He'll probably transition to a right winger in the league, I think. Uh, he's with JYP in Liga. Uh, that's the league that he plays in, uh, La Liga. And the third on the list, and these are all – I mean, they're all perception. I mean, they, if you look at the ranks, right? So the rank for Lambert is 8.67, but he's at 2, uh, 4.67 for the next guy, 5.73 for the next guy. And then you've got guys ranked at 14, fifth. So, I mean, it's all perception based on who this writer, and I'll give credit to him real quick, NBC Sports, who he feels is uh, the top 
people, and that would be Will Scouch uh, with McKeensHockey.com. Well, jumping into the third prospect. Third prospect, we have Matthew Savoy. He is a centerman, Winnipeg Ice with the WHL, a very good hockey league, very competitive hockey league uh, with the WHL. His average rank is 4.67. Okay, Logan Cooley, a centerman with the U.S. national team, under 18, of course, average rank 5.73. Next one, Seamus, an Irishman, Seamus Casey. He is a right-handed defenseman, intriguing, with the U.S. national team as well. Average rank is 14.36. So it looks like uh, Mr. Scouch is a little bit higher on him than some others. The sixth one, I'm going to get this wrong. Maybe if he's a saber, I'll eventually figure out how to pronounce it. But it's Yurag Slavkowski. Yeah, Lurag Slavkowski. He is a winger, I believe. Winger, I mean, he play left or right. Uh, with TPS in La Liga again, and he is ranked at 7.2 on the average scale. The seventh prospect is David Yerachek. I know I said that wrong, but it, look, it looks like Yerachek. So David Yerachek, right-hand defenseman out of HE Pleasant in the Czech Extraliga, and his average rank is 8.71. Our eighth-ranked prospect is Joachim Kemel, right winger, JYP out of La Liga, average rank 6.07. So as you can see, the, the ranks are different, but that's just because of the list that we're going over with uh, from Mr. Scouch. Uh, ninth ring pro prospect is Danila Yarav, and he is a right winger out of Mellerg. I'm not going to get this right, and I should get to the KHL, and it's a really good league, and we get a lot of good hockey players out of it. But well, that's perceptional as well. Some people don't think the KHL is very good. But Metallurg, Magneta Gorsk, Gorsk, Magneto Gorsk. Yes, Metalurg Medidogorsk out of the KHL, average rank 7.07. .07. Let's move on as quick as we can. Uh, the 10th rank prospect is Simon Nemchek, Nemec, or Nemec, it might be Nemec. Simon Nemec, right handed defenseman out of HK Nitra, out of the Slovakian League, Slovakian Extra League, his average rank is 7.67. So those are the top 10 prospects. Like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on the draft today because we're going to have, I mean, we're going to try and live stream the entire thing, all the Sabres picks. Of course, they don't make it easy for us having one at 7, 16, and I want to say 28. could be 27. I believe it's 28, though. 7, 16, and 27. So we're going to be covering the whole draft. We're going to try and stay live as long as we can. Of course, I mean, this could take a very long time. First goal picks should go fairly quickly since a lot of those teams are going to probably have a good idea of what they're going to grab. I did not see Shane Wright go first. It would be pretty shocking to me because he's going to be a fantastic player, but probably a generational player. Of course, he could be Nail Yokopov too, so and not end up being a trans or a generational player. Isn't that crazy? How the Oilers get Yakupov, who's supposed to be generational, ends up being nothing, but they get another chance at a generational player because of the lottery. And McDavid goes to uh, Edmonton rather than Buffalo, and we get Eichel, right? The consolation prize, but eh, is what it is. And it's not like Edmonton's having tons of success either. Honestly, I don't really know what's going on there. It's crazy. You got probably the two best players in the world, and you're still not winning cups. Haven't won a cup in that, at least. So I'm going to go over the Sabres line combinations, and maybe these weren't it for the majority of the year, but I'm going over the, the most recent game we have, which is the last game of the year, April 29th versus the Chicago Blackhawks, and the line combos were this. First line was centered by Tage Thompson. Jess Skinner was the left winger, Victor Ole Ole Ole, it's Ole, Ole Olofsson. I'm going to say his nickname. I should at least get it right, right? Was the right winger. The second line was centered by Cinnamon Dylan Cousins, Alex Tuck, the big uh, the big piece of chicken that came back in the Eichel trade on the left wing, and Casey Mitz, don't call me Mitz, Middlestat on the right wing. The third line, and this is one that I hope to see improved upon in free agency, was centered by Zemgis Gergensen, Vinny Hindestrova on the left wing, Rasmus Asplund on the right wing. And the last line, John Hayden, player I really like. I think he's got guts. Uh, I think he fights, and I think he plays hockey very tough. Uh, but he can also give you a little bit of that grinder, too, you know, and I really like to see that in a player. He's an all-around hockey player. You know, he's a fourth-wing guy that centers a, centers or, or wings even, is, you know, plays in the wing in a fourth-line uh, fourth team, like an old-school fourth-line team, you know, like we used to have Peters and uh, I don't know, Mike Greer was in the team. He's a little bit more skilled than that, more of a third-liner, second-liner type guy even at some point in his career. But fourth-liner, you know, Adam Mayer, Andrew Peters, Patrick Kletter, those types of guys. I like him a lot. Some people would argue that there's not a place for those guys in hockey anymore. I don't think so. I think they still have a place in hockey. At least they have a place in our hearts. But, yeah, that line was centered by John Hayden. You had Anders Bjork, who has been less than impressive. At least we'll have to see what happens. But Anders Bjork on the left wing. Peyton Krebs, another uh, – 
if 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 Alex Tuck was the big piece of chicken, then Peyton Krebs was the big, juicy, thick, luxurious drumstick on the right wing of that fourth line. Uh, he showed us a little bit of promise. He showed us a lot of good things. He has some great hands, fantastic hands, fantastic vision. Um, if he can step his shot up a little bit, I mean, he could be a really big impact player, and that could be a really great trade for us. Um, let's move on to the defense, the pairings. Uh, the first defensive pairing was on the right hand, of course, Rasmus, uh, Daily Double, Deline, Matthias Samuelson, the left wing, uh, Henry, Yoki, Yokiaru on the left wing for the second pairing with Owen, generational defenseman, Power, our top prospect in the organization, who showed some promise. He had two shots. He also had a goal in that game. Uh, the last uh, pairing was Jacob Bryce on the right wing and Mark Pissick, who a lot of Sabres fans like, on the left wing. Um, I'm not going to go over the power plays. The first power play was pretty good. That was centered by Middlestat. You had Thompson uh, on, on the back end with Dalene and Tuck on the right wing and Skinner on the left wing. Skinner, who's been stepping up his play quite a bit this year. Um, he's back, I think, uh, which is great. We paid him a ton of money for a very long time. So we'll see how that goes. <sighs> I want to get back to this here. I want to take a peek at the goalies real quick, too. Uh, that's not what I at all. A little technical difficulty here. Either way, we know who the goalies are at this point, um, or who they aren't, and we'll have to see what goes on here. But as far as free agency, that's coming up. That's actually after the draft. My father was talking to me yesterday, actually, 4th of July barbecue, of course, and we were going over, like, you know, it's kind of weird how, you know, free agency is usually July 1st. It's always July 1st. You can count on it this year. It's July 16th, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. Looked it up yesterday. It's July 16th. I could be confused with the 14th, but I'm pretty sure it's the 16th when shop gets talked. And the Sabres last year, there were rumors, and I, I think it was true, that they were in on Philip Grubauer. Some would say, I may be in that some, that if we had Philip Grubauer, we might have actually made a better push for the playoffs. We did add up 25 points out, so it's not like we were a hop and a skip and you know a couple stolen games from a goalie away from being in the playoffs, but there were a bunch of games that we lost because we didn't have good goaltending. So is it possible we win 13 more games with a good goalie? Yeah. Is it probable? Probably not. But probably five or six games, right? You know, Especially with someone of the caliber of Philip Grubauer. Um, but we'll see what happens. That that ship has sailed at this point so far. There were some rumors about the Sabres maybe trading back for Olmark in the last couple weeks. I don't think that's true. I don't know that that's true. I don't know if that helps either. Uh, I mean, I'm on to trying to find that that next Ryan Miller, and that's going to be tough because he's probably the second best goalie um, skill wise in our team's history, and the first best, you know, in my opinion, just because I grew up Ryan Miller kid and I watched him win his game after game after game after game after game with amazing save after amazing save after amazing save. So that's where I'm with, but. Yeah, just wanted to give you guys a, a brief preview of really what we have to come here, what we're working with now, getting into the draft. And, you know, when the draft starts, we'll, we'll go live, but we're going to obviously give a little bit of coverage beforehand, obviously coverage during, um, and we'll talk about the picks afterwards. And then, you know, the week after, so we'll have Thursday, which today is Tuesday, I'm recording this. You should see this tonight or tomorrow. Um, we're going to get into the draft in a couple of days, of course, because we'll have the draft live coverage, which is going to be awesome. And you're going to love it. And we're going to give you some information on the Sabres and maybe about some of the younger prospects. You know, this is probably the, I would say this is probably the third or fourth least popular draft, right? With the, you know, the most popular draft being eh, least popular, probably the first or second then really, if that's the rankings I'm going by. Because the fourth, you know, least popular draft, I'd say would probably be, if you're thinking of most popular to least popular or least popular to most popular in rankings from one to 10. Um, with one being the least popular, four being the most popular, would be the NFL draft, of course, at four. Um, basketball draft is probably second. I, I For me, it's the MLB draft is, is the second, but basketball being third, hockey being fourth, it's just not really, unless you're getting a player like a Shane Wright, right? Shane Wright's coming out this year. Rasmus Stalimi came out. Uh, Jack Eichel, Connor McDavid, those guys. Um, you're not really seeing an instant impact. It's usually a year, maybe two, maybe even three for some time. I mean, we have guys that are we drafted two or three years ago that are still in our top five prospects. Uh, you got Ryan Johnson, the defenseman. We'll have to see what comes of him and a couple of other guys that I really like uh, for the Sabres. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, just taking a peek, I want to go over the Sabres' top 10 prospects real quick. Just give their names out. Owen Power, defensive uh, player. Of course, we know him. Jack Quinn, I'm very excited to see what he can do this year, coming back fully healthy. He's a right winger and a left winger. Uh, J.J. John Baterka, he is a centerman and a winger as well. He's our third prospect. The guys are all really young. That's the thing. So you've got those top three prospects. Their median age is like eight. 18.6, because Power is 18, and the other two guys are 19. Isaac Rosen uh, is the right winger. He's our fourth-ranked prospect. Uh, the guy I just mentioned, Ryan Johnson out of Minnesota, one of our first-round picks that we got with the from the Blues, I believe, from the Ryan O'Reilly trade. Not that I ever want to mention that trade again. 
Um, no, I don't think it was that bad. So we got Tager Thompson back, and he's been amazing. Uh, six, Oscar Lace, uh, Lakesonen, sorry, defenseman. A uh, handful of these guys with the Americans as well. And then uh, seven, UPK, or UPL, uh, Ukpek Lukanen um, with Rochester. He's a goalie. Eric Matillo, goalie, even though I don't know that he's ever going to be a saber, sadly. Uh, number nine, R2, Rustalainen. He is a centerman, of course. And then Brett Murray, uh, left winger in Rochester. He's 23, a little bit older. So those last couple guys, both 23, well to see when it comes to them. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's time to come up and, you know, join the NHL at that age. You want to usually get in 23, 24, 25. Uh, to be able to make an impact and kind of speed your game up and whatnot. But like I said, draft coverage on Thursday. Uh, until that point, guys, stay live, stay chill, get on the ice, hit some pucks. Even though it's summertime in Buffalo, it's pretty warm today. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have some more stuff coming out and, and you know, propping up and, and kind of giving us information, reminding you about our live draft coverage. And you'll see us live that night. So join in. If you have any questions, of course, come join us and uh, talk hockey. Look at watch some hockey and, and go over the draft picks, right? And get excited about Sabres hockey because last year towards the end of the year was very exciting. The second half was very exciting. Um, there were even exciting points in the first part or the first half. But I think Sabres hockey is on a rebound. Uh, attendance was up after that Eichel game, man. I was at that game. It was awesome. Attendance was up. And there was just this passion about the fan base that really came back from when I was a kid. And it was important to me. Which is why part of why I'm doing this podcast. I'm top of loving, you know, love doing podcasts. Um, this is it, right? So join us on Thursday. We'll get some stuff out there. Get us some questions. If you want to send some uh, questions to me that you want me to answer on the draft, I can do that as well. It's at J Don't Fade. That's at J A Y D O N T F A D E. I give out betting picks as well. If you want to hear some of those, we'll go over some of those in the podcast coming up for the NHL as well, of course. Of course, we're going to have some awesome, cool guests on as well. So join us on Thursday. We will see you then. Until then, Saber Nation, night, night. Bye bye. <laughs>